Sketch Endeavor is finally back. And in this video, I'm going to be drawing a bunch of cows. Why? Because I find them really inspiring. And in fact, I'm going to be working on heaps of paintings this year featuring that subject. But it really doesn't matter what we're drawing as long as we're drawing. And that's the point of Sketch Endeavor. Let's get into it. Hi there and welcome back to the studio. My name's Andrew. This is the place where we talk about all things to do with traditional oil painting or digital art in my series Sketch Zone or here in this special series Sketch Endeavor where it's the daily habit of drawing. Now again confession time. I feel like I every time I do one of these Sketch Endeavor videos it's time for me to confess something to you but I got to admit I let go of the daily habit. It just wasn't part of my daily routine. Well, in recent weeks, that's changed. I'm pleased to say, and I've been getting my sketch time in every single day. I've started treating this again as a non-negotiable to just make sure I show up and do it. And man, I'm noticing a huge improvement in my drawings and I'm also having more clarity in my thinking. And I think I'm coming up with better ideas that I can take to the easel. Now, as I said, it doesn't really matter what we're drawing so long as we're drawing. We're developing skills here, creative artistic muscle, and that's going to come in real handy when it comes time to do anything creative, whether it's drawing or painting or heck, even just thinking better. There's something about drawing, about hitting that zone of deep focus and just sketching in the sketchbook that really is so beneficial in so many other areas. Now, I must admit, when I first got back into Sketch Endeavor after a long absence, I was a little rusty, it was a little shaky, but as I started going day by day, things started to loosen up. Now, just one thing before we get stuck into drawing, if you're not following me right now on Instagram, you might wanna do that because over the last week, I've actually been going live from the drawing board every morning from 4 a.m. New Zealand time. Why 4 a.m.? Why not? It's that time of day that I have to dedicate to drawing and I draw between 4 and 6 a.m. And then that way, I've got my two hours of drawing out of the way before anybody's even awake and before I have responsibilities as a father or I need to work on my art business or I need to get stuck into painting or whatever. That's my time to get in my drawing. So I make sure I get it out of the way early. And just to make sure I showed up, I held myself accountable publicly by announcing I was going to go live on Instagram. And so the whole of last week, I went live 4 a.m. six days a week, Monday through Saturday. And I managed a perfect run of showing up every day. I don't, even I'm a little bit surprised by that, but I'm gonna do it again here at some point on Instagram Live. So if you wanna join me there, then make sure you're following me. Here's my handle on the screen. There's also a link in the description down below. I'll see you over there. But right now I've got some drawing to share with you. So let's quit talking about it. Let's be about it. It's been several months and I'm feeling quite rusty. I hope my magic pencil here, my Y Studio Mechanical 0.7 millimeter 2B pencil can help some of these marks flow. Now I'm going through a bunch of photographic reference here and I've got this desire to paint some cows in the landscape and really show off their anatomy. And there's something about these animals that I just love. I love the way the light shines off the fur. And so what I start to do is think about the animals in the landscape and tone, and I'm literally just copying the pictures as I go. This is normally the starting point for me before I start formulating the idea for any final composition. Now, something interesting has happened with the sketch endeavor in terms of my relationship to drawing. I used to think about this in a very similar way to the way I was approaching the digital medium, which is this is just a means to an end. I'm a painter, painter's got to paint, but first I just want to know what I'm doing 
at the easel so better make a plan and draw it out first and so consequently i'd end up with a bunch of drawings that were compositional studies and thumbnails and little bits of extra information that i could take to the easel without worrying about creating drawings in their own right or just for the sake of drawing and i must admit over the last few weeks that i've been doing this that relationship has changed i'm now starting to draw more for drawing's sake I'm interested in sharing more of this with you as Sketch Endeavor develops this year and as we move forward with this process. But I start to think here, okay, I, I've got some ideas for composition. So again, old habits die hard. Let's go ahead and draw out some thumbnails and work out what some of these paintings could look like. Again, I'm just obsessed with the cows and the landscape. And, I love right here, for instance, these cows grazing on this slope just on the side of Roy's Peak above Lake Wanaka in the South Island of New Zealand. One thing I love about this image is the way the orange fur pops against that violet background and some of the blues. There's just complementary opposites all over the place. But my consideration here with designing thumbnails is tone. What are my darkest darks? Where are my lightest lights? What's this composition gonna look like in terms of value? Now, whenever I'm drawing a thumbnail, just from a compositional standpoint, I wanna move through this process relatively quickly. The point here is not to create a final drawing that somebody could frame and hang on a wall. It's to make some decisions very quickly and establish the overall arrangement and work out what needs to be done from here. What's the next step in the plan? But you have to start somewhere. Just starting with the photo won't do. I always wanna go, okay, what do I love about this photo? What's working here? Okay, if I was to change anything, what would those changes be? What's not working? And then what if? What if I moved this? What if I added another animal? What if I added something to the bottom right hand corner or the bottom left? What if I had a tree here? What if I added more cows? What if I took cows away? What if, what if, what if? And from here, your composition begins to take on a very unique look. Something very different to that initial photographic reference. I always chuckle to myself when people say, hey, why don't you just print the photo out and chuck that up on the canvas rather than paint it. Why paint it all if you're just going to copy a photograph? I get all kinds of comments in regards to my work. I don't think those people paint, but I also know that they don't see what actually goes into designing a painting. Now, despite what I was saying about sketching for sketching's sake, that was something that was an interesting shift with the sketch endeavor that um, has come up for me. But here, I'm thinking about those ideas. And so whenever I'm drawing thumbnails and I'm thinking about a body of work, which is what I'm planning here, I'm thinking, how would these work in relation to another? How would one painting relate to another, hang or sit on a wall? And here I've developed three ideas, cows on a slope, cows in the water, and cows in Glenorchy Paradise in front of some mountains. I take my favorite idea and work this up into a bigger sketch. Here I have all of the good ideas from what's working in my final thumbnail. Hopefully none of the bad ideas of what's not working. And I might develop a bit more what if because the scale of this drawing is a little bit bigger so I could see different areas within the composition much clearer. And so I can define areas. What if I had rocks and weeds and wildflowers here in the foreground in front of the cows? That would look pretty cool. What if I had some briars and brambles behind the cows to perform something as a bit of a contrast device here in the scene? Now here, my only consideration with the drawing is tone. With painting and digital, of course, we can work with color, but here I've only got tone. My first consideration, of course, is the outline. What are the lines that define the major shapes in the composition? You'll notice that I start off very light. I use a whole bunch of different pencils and I'm still working out what's my favorite. 
I've dropped the 0.7 millimeter mechanical pencil for the time being. I've used that thing way too much. And recently I've been opting for the Mars Lumograph series made by Stapler, as well as these Palomino black wings, which are really nice for sketching. So I'll make some light marks to form the construction lines of the composition and then start to map in some darker tones in some of these shaded areas like these distant mountains here. But because my primary consideration is the tone, I'm paying very close attention to that, both how light particular values are and how dark and then the relationships between the dark and the light. I really do enjoy working on toned paper. It's a little bit of a challenge working on white paper like here in the sketchbook. So I try to go a little bit darker than I think would be necessary. Now again here, this part of my sketch journey is about creating a map or a plan for the composition. It's not necessarily a matter of creating a final drawing that could be cut out of the sketchbook and framed. I want something to be able to take to the easel. And I want something that's gone further than the photograph could go. I have no control over those cows where they are in the landscape. I'm no cattle herder or wrangler. I couldn't direct them to show up on that slope exactly where I think they would look best. They weren't going to pay any attention to me at all. And the closer I got, the further they moved away. But I can do that as an artist here on the page. If I'm clever enough, if I study the animal enough, if I really do my due diligence here, I can work out, okay, where is this animal going to go? How's that going to relate to another one? When I'm shooting my photographic reference, often there will just be one animal that I'm working with and it will be moving around, grazing, and then turn, maybe look towards me, maybe move away. And as I'm photographing it in different positions, later in the sketchbook, I can then take one and then superimpose one upon another, upon another, upon another. And one animal photographed multiple times within the landscape could start to form a herd. There's something about this piece that I'm really enjoying though. I really am looking forward to the chunkiness of the brushwork that I'm gonna get into in the foreground and the crispness of some of these rocks and weeds that are standing tall. But I'm getting way ahead of myself. It's, it's a drawing, Andrew, just chill out. We're not painting yet, we're drawing. Stick in the sketchbook, I continue to tell myself. As a painter, I do a bunch of rough sketching. This is such a vital component of the painting process. Sometimes I might do something a little more refined, but for the most part, this really helps me get clarification on ideas to take to the easel. Now, sometimes I'm not too sure as to where a piece is going to be going. And so this is where I start getting really sketchy and exploring and feeling my way along just based on a reaction to what I'm seeing in that reference material. I have this idea of cows in the landscape just kind of chilling on a slope. Something very reminiscent of old Dutch or Flemish masters. Something very heavy with tone, with these animals caught in the light. So again, what I do is I just start reflecting on what I'm seeing in my reference material. And here, I have photographed some cows just relaxing on the side of a slope, caught in sun. There's a beautiful thunderstorm just brewing in the distance, but that's a long ways off. And there's some really nice violet tones and shades in those hillsides just beyond. But I'm not sure on the arrangement. I can't see the idea yet in my head, but I know there's something here. So I begin just picking out what I enjoy. I really love the way this cow here is reclining and how that light catches on the anatomy, that underlying skeletal structure, as well as the muscles across the shoulder blades. I also really love this calf, the way this is caught in the light and how the sun shines off the head and the front of the neck, but also the way it's turning and looking back towards us. 
So I think if I'm going to paint this, then this would be a great little addition to the composition. As I work and draw more, I start getting better at gauging and judging relationships as how one shape relates to another. Once I've more or less blocked in or marked in my construction lines and the shapes feel right to me, then I'll go ahead and shade in. I'm also working a lot more with my shading techniques and it's been really interesting to watch how this technique has been developing. Now, I'm not breaking any new ground here by any means. That's not what I mean. But when I'm shading or working on my pencil work, I end up making little discoveries for myself going, ah, if I hold the pencil this way with an overhand grip and use the broad side of that lead, I can knock in tone really quickly, but still allow for that texture of the paper and use that to create something that's almost reminiscent of fur. It's a very broken surface and then work back in with the outline. If I press light, then I can make some construction lines. If I press harder, then I can firm up the outside edge. And so I'm thinking about this. I'm engaged in this process called deliberate practice. And so I've been listening to a bunch of audiobooks, and I heard this concept from Cal Newport's book titled, So Good They Can't Ignore You. It's an interesting title. And I thought it was, was pretty intriguing and I really wanted to know what Cal Newport was on about there. And there was this concept there in becoming so good they can't ignore you called deliberate practice. You know, a lot of us artists, we should be practicing our techniques, but how many of us are really engaged in deliberate practice? Now, I'll be the first to admit it, this was not me. I wasn't forcing myself into situations that were uncomfortable. I was sticking to my comfort zone for the most part. And I kept doing the same things over and over and over again. And consequently, there wasn't much artistic growth. But by forcing yourself into a position where you have to think about things in a different way, or you're stretching or reaching just beyond where you're currently capable of, then that forces you to form new neural pathways. It forces you into a position where you have to learn, grow, and adapt. You want just enough pressure where it's uncomfortable, but not so much that it stresses you out. And this is what sketching is starting to do for me. I'm reaching, I'm striving, I'm really pushing, and it is uncomfortable. But I'm not freaking out here at the drawing board. I'm not getting distraught but I am going, ah, doesn't quite have it nearly. All right, do another one, do another one, do another one. And a big part of deliberate practice is repetition. We must be engaged in the process and repeat it over and over and over again. There's something about the daily habit too that is so important. How many of us actually get to do this every day? Again, I'm going to put my hand up now and say, this hasn't been me. But recently, since I've been insisting on getting this in every day and really treating it as a non-negotiable, despite all of the life pressures going on, I've seen vast improvements at the drawing board, not only in my technique, but in the clarity of my thinking, in approaching ideas at the easel. And I think I'm coming up with better compositions as a result really excited to share this journey with you. So as I'm sketching along here, I'm thinking a lot about the relationships between animals. I'm thinking about how one animal relates to another. I'm thinking about the overall composition, which is starting to form in my mind. But more study needs to be done. I'm thinking, okay, maybe we just let go of the composition for the time being and maybe just celebrate one relationship in particular, maybe this cow and how it relates to its calf. I love this cow here just coming up the rise and just pausing for a moment, maybe waiting patiently for its calf to come. And then the way this calf is walking away from us and then turns and looks back towards the viewer. Something really nice about this, not only the relationship between the two animals, 
but how it involves the viewer as well. I'm thinking more and more about how cows are put together. I mean, how can you not? We're drawing a cow here. What's that anatomy look like? How does the skin and muscle hang off that bone? How do different muscles contort based on the movement? I don't have much understanding here of how cows are put together, so some study does need to be done. Now, in addition to having great reference material that I shoot myself, I'm also using something else, which is a bit of a secret weapon here in the studio. I believe as artists, we stand on the shoulders of giants, on those greats who came before us, and success leaves clues. And one of my favorite resources for artists is Ellenberger's An Atlas of Animal Anatomy for Artists, a fantastic book that if you're going to draw animals or you're going to paint animals, it's really important to have this. And this book features the etchings by Dietrich. And I had this book open several times as I was drawing my cows. Even though I was following along that photographic reference, I still wanted to know why was this lump on the cow appearing in this particular place? Why was the light shining across the skull in this way? Is there a depression there in the front of the forehead? Or is there something that's slightly more convex that sticks out and catches the light? What's going on here? And so having the multi-layered depictions of cows from the skeletal system to some of that soft tissue, to the muscles, to the skin, and to the hair pattern, it gave me so much information that I was able to go back into my reference material and really understand at a deeper level what was going on. And this ultimately will help me recreate it in the sketchbook and also hopefully at the easel. Now with this particular drawing technique, I'm taking a bit more of a refined approach. Again, I only have the tone of the white paper, so I'm going a bit darker than I would ordinarily. A particular group of pencils that really helps create that depth of tone are the Staedtler Carbon Black. Again, I've listed all my sketching materials in that description below this video, so click that Show More button to expand that box, and you'll have a look at what I'm using for these drawings. Again, I'm playing here, and I'm experimenting, and I'm constantly learning about the drawing process and what works and what doesn't. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are and your particular approach to sketching and some things that you really enjoy drawing with, so make sure you leave me a comment down below. But I do love these carbon black pencils. Here, this is a 2B, and when I draw across that flat, broad side of the pencil, revealing some of that paper texture, it does achieve a really nice depth of tone. One thing I'm enjoying about the drawing process is areas of flat tone and shading, but then worked in, back into those areas with contour lines and darker, tonally much deeper fine lines that define form and contour around masses. This helps me achieve a little bit of three-dimensionality within the drawing. It's at this point that I start getting lost in that process. Normally when I draw, it's early, early in the morning before anybody's awake and I get in a really nice two-hour session. That's been the habit that I've been in for the last few weeks, and it's been so enjoyable. It's nice to reconnect. And I'm starting to draw more now as an exercise of just getting lost in the process rather than treating this as a means to an end, just designing another composition. Now I'm starting to produce drawings just for drawing's sake and really appreciating and learning more about my subject. Naturally, I'm a really goal-oriented person and I had set a target for myself of 10,000 hours, which was popularized in Malcolm Gladwell's book, The Outliers, as what was necessary to master any given endeavor. But one thing's for certain, when you're engaged in the process and involved in what you're doing, the process takes over and you start to forget about the goal. 
and then you just get caught up in the enjoyment of being here drawing. It's less about the final product and more about the process. Well, I really hope you've enjoyed this video and you've come away with maybe an idea, maybe a newfound enthusiasm or an approach when it comes to drawing. What I really want to do here with this series of Sketch Endeavor is encourage you, encourage you to take this up again as a daily habit and really push yourself here. Showing up is really half the battle. And once we just show up, if we just stay in the room, if we've got that pencil in our hand, then chances are we're going to start to become more and more engaged in the process. And we're going to start to see improvements across the board creatively. Sketch Endeavor is about the daily habit of drawing. So if you're going to take part, and I really hope you do, all you have to do is this. It's very simple. Just get a sketchbook, get a pencil. And if you're going to post your work online, particularly on Instagram, use the hashtag Sketch Endeavor. I've got a whole lot more drawing content to share with you this year, so I'm really looking forward to sharing more Sketch Endeavor videos with you. Now, just before I get out of here, if you want to see longer, extended versions of either my painting demonstrations, my digital drawing, or the Sketch Endeavor videos, you're going to find extended versions of these videos on my Patreon page. I call this my art school. I've started my own academy. I kind of jokingly refer to it as Tish Academy. So if you want to join me there, I run that through Patreon. You'll find that link down below. Well, I'm going to get out of here and get back to the drawing board. Thank you so much for spending this time with me here in the studio, and I'll see you again in the next video.